Hello and welcome back to Scratch 3D Printing again. Today we have another unbox and it's gonna be epic. Holy crap, that is heavy. Oh my gosh. I finally did it. I did not want to do this at all, but electricity in my house keep going off from time to time. So if I do in like a 12, 13 hour print on the Cable Max, and let's say nine hours into it, electricity in my house die, then it's just a waste of nine hours and maybe like a whole kilogram of filament. <sighs> so I bought this thing. This is the anchor power supplies. Let's get this unboxed. Let's cut it. Oh my gosh, this thing is huge. This is not cheap at all, man. I bought this. I could have bought another 3D printer, but let's continue. Okay, I think this is the correct way to do it. Ugh, my room is so small. Look at that. I'm gonna have to do it on the ground. Oh my gosh, that is heavy. Got it out. Oh, I did not realize it was gonna be this heavy. This is ready to 1,800 watts, so the cable max is about 1,000 watts. The power supply. I bought this just to power the cable max so that when the electricity went out in my house, this thing can still power my cable max. I hope, I hope this thing can take it. Whoa, look at this. Look at that. This foam? Yeah. We have in a box similar to the cable max. This whole plastic piece up. Oh my gosh, that is heavy. People say that it's light. It's not light at all. You get a five year warranty. And you get some user guide safety sheet. You also get a box of accessories, I believe. Let's see what this is. Oh, it's the power cord. Okay. Okay. You get one, two, three power dinghy. I will figure this out what they are. Oh, it's not small. People say that it's small, it's not small. Oh, it smells fresh. This thing is not small at all. I thought it would be like this side, but it's like half the size of the K1 Max. Oh my goodness. Where am I gonna place this? I don't have space in my room anymore. Look at that. Look at all my trash. Oh, let's take a look at this. It has two USB, two USB-C, a car socket right there. You get one, two, three, four, five, six outlet. This is a, they call it a surge, surge pad, which can rate it up to 2,400 watts, I believe. And you press this button to turn the things that you want on. There's the LED light bar right here. And right here, you can add an additional power supplies that comes with the anchor, but I didn't bother. that. It would be too expensive. This thing costs seven hundred dollars oh my gosh dude if you are if you are interested in this i'll leave a link down below of course so you can check it out for yourself and it's heaviest trick this right here is solar charging and this is just regular charging and this is a reset button okay well let's give it a try and see if this thing can power the cable max so i plug it in it has about 86 percent power in there it tells you lots of things it's charging at 600 watts right now and it's going to be fully charged in about 0.3 hours i will be plugging in the cable max right now i'm going to use this one instead of this one and see if it works i'm going to turn on the cable max okay nothing happened i think i need to turn this thing on okay it's on and look at that, the cable max turned on, let's go. I'll show it like this so you can see both of them. Don't have enough room. This thing keeps turning off. Okay, the cable max fan has started. Let's try unplugging this thing. Okay, okay, this thing is still running at 88%. But it doesn't tell me how much wattage is putting out to the cable max. So, the first thing I'm going to do is heat up the nozzle. Let's just do uh, 100 celsius and if we look at the anchor maker it's using 56 watt for the nozzle to heat up stop dying 
slowing down. Okay, that's good. It can heat up the nozzle. But it's the bed that is the problem. The bed takes about 800 watt. I test this before. I bought myself a power supply like this before. It's only rated to 600 watt. <laughs> and I thought it could power it. I heat up the nozzle, it worked. But when I heat up the bed, everything just shut off. This thing got shut off. Even my cable max got shut off. So let's see if this anchor can take it. Okay, so let's go to the bed right now. Let's just put it at 50. Click OK. And let's look at this. Look at that, it jumped to 700. It jumped all the way to 700 watt. Now it's dropping down to 30 watt. And it has 2.5 hours remaining. So initial power boost all the way to 700. This thing can take it. Rate it up to 1800 watt. And oh nice, it could actually take the K1 Max bed. Let's bump it to 60. And let's look at this. It jumped to 140 watt again. 780 watt, look at that. And it did not die. Oh my gosh, that is so nice. Okay, that is amazing. When the KO Max bed starts to heat up, it can boost all the way to 700 watt. And this thing can take it without shutting off or power loss and anything. Put the nozzle and the bed at zero zero. And I'll wait until it cools down. And then I will start make both of them heat up at the same time and see how much the power is going to jump. The ink can make it drop 1%. It's not using any power right now. As you can see at the bottom here, there's no power rating or anything like that because the kill max is cooling down and nothing is being used. Let's see what happens if I push this. Okay, if you push that, the kill max die. If you push this button, all of these power went out. And this anchor Solex, you can control it from your phone. So I'm going to do that in a bit and we'll connect it remotely to this thing so that if I go anywhere that I'm not home and my 3D printer is done finished printing, I'm just going to shut it off from my phone and everything's good. There's the light bar. One, two, three, super bright. And then four, it died again. I thought there was an SOS light. Press it, holding it. Oh, there we go. You got to hold it. Okay. SOS. I want you guys to keep a look at this. Look at the screen. I'm going to heat up my bed and the nozzle at the same time. Okay. So let's do the nozzle first. I'll put my nozzle at 120 Celsius. And now the bed at 60 Celsius. And look at this. Let's see. 60 watt. 51 watt. Stop dying. Let's put the bed at 70 C. <gasps> Look at that, it jumped to 756 watt. Almost a thousand watt. Let's put the nozzle up to 200 and see how high it's gonna jump. Okay, it stopped heating it. Let's put the bed to 85. 54 watt, 792 watt, wow. Almost 800. So that's the reason why my previous buy of these does not survive. It only rated to 600, so when it boosts to 700, it has a safety feature where it shuts everything off and the KO Max die, the power supply die, you gotta restart everything. But now this Inker Maker or this Inker Solex can take it, which is very nice. I am planning to use this thing to power my KO Max, power my CR6SE, and of course to power my computer. I'll be doing that test tomorrow because right now it's what? Four in the morning, so I gotta go to bed. I just want to get this unboxed and test it for my cable max because I'm gonna be doing a long print and I don't want it to fail in the middle of the printing time. So this video will continue tomorrow. Let's go, it's working, amazing. It's been like what, 10 minutes? This thing dropped 2%. What I'm gonna do is plug in this thing to my wall outlet and then my K1 Max, my PC, and my CR6SE will be plugged in to this Inker Solex. Everything draws power from this. This thing draws power from my home. If my home electricity went out, this thing can still power everything. Yeah, it's a little bit bigger than I thought. People were reviewing this thing online, and I didn't realize it was going to be this big and this heavy. People said that, oh, I can lift it with one hand. Dude, it's, it's not. It's like what? At least. 
distance is at least 25 pounds to 30 pounds, 25 to 30 pounds. But anyway, talk too much. Let's go to tomorrow and test everything. Before I do anything else or before I go to sleep, I'm gonna weigh this. My thing here can take up to 50 pounds, so I hope it doesn't crush it. Oh. I was so correct. 28. 28.10 ounce. That is not light. That is heavy. It is what it is. Okay, so let's continue setting up my anchor solex. What I'm planning is I have two power strip outlet. I have two of those and I have this anchor solex. So these two are plug into the wall outlet. What I'm planning to do is take this one and that other one out, plug it into this anchor solex and then plug this anchor solex to the wall outlet and I'll be putting this thing all the way back there and just connect these to this one so that even if that outlet goes out the anchor solex does still power this outlet strip and that other outlet but I don't know if this will be able to handle my PC my cable max and my cr 6 and my printer here I have so many, I have so many stuff going on here, so but let's get started. I don't know how I'm gonna able to move this over there. Oh, and by the way, like this, it's carbon fiber at the top. Very nice. Well, I'm gonna try and move this over there. I just face a problem right now. These nano tape, <laughs> they're so hard to get off. Use double sided nano tape to tape this thing onto my table, and now. For the life of me, I cannot get it off. This doesn't even reach it. Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm gonna position this over here now because it doesn't reach, so. Oh, uh, well, I think it's gonna take like hours in order for me to get this thing off. I don't wanna even get it. I don't wanna do that because it's gonna be right back. Well, time to figure it out. Holy crap, dude. I used these braided fishing line and it actually worked. I cut through it, so I was just going back and forth with these braided line and I did not know that you can cut things so easily with just some braided fishing line like that I cut into the plastic right there wow and I think I did on this side also oh my gosh these strings are dangerous oh my gosh that could have been so bad though but Oh, I got it off. Man, these nano tape, when they're sticky, they're so sticky. When they're not sticky, they don't stick at all, but... Wow. I cut so far into it, I did not even realize. Hopefully, it did not get to any components inside of this thing. Holy crap. <sighs> time to get this thing mounted on that side. I'm not gonna use that much nano tape this time. <laughs> I ran into another problem. So this thing was exactly aligned with this thing, so I cannot plug it in. So I use some 3D printed parts as a spacer at the bottom <laughs> and it actually fits perfectly and that is just how much nano tape I'm using only this bit part and a little bit at the bottom stick it right there so that it can reach that and it can reach the outlet let's go okay I got everything plugged in right there so now I'm gonna click this button you hear the click it's gonna power everything on. It turns red. That then turns red. It's using about 40 watt power. For what though? I'm not using anything actually. Uh, don't. Not quite sure what is running that 30 watt. It could be my monitor, but let's turn my PC on. It's using 100 watt for my. PC, 100 watt for my PC. Let's turn the CR6 SE on. Still using about 60, 100 watt to turn on the thing. So it will be about three hours until it dies, estimate. And now the K1 Max, there we go. The screen keeps dying. Okay, so everything's turned on right now and it's still working. I'm gonna heat the bed and the nozzle, preheat. Oh my gosh, look at that. It preheated to 500 watt. The R6 SE used about 500 watt. Okay, time for the K1 Max. Let's do 80. And then let's do 180. 
Okay. You can hear that the fan is on right now. It's using about 1,300 watt. And the fan has kicked on. That is actually pretty loud. What the? It's using 1,200 watt. Close to 300 watt. And that is powering my PC, CR6SE, and the Cable Max. 1200 watt. Wow. The fan has kicked on and stood at 100%. So this thing will last about 0.7 hours. So that's about, what, well, not even one hour, that's only like what, 45 minutes? The fan is turned on. I can feel it right here. Dropped 1%. The power is going down, down, down because the nozzle has heated up all the way. CR6 is almost still there, still using 500 watt. The bed here is almost done, so it's slowing down the power. And as you can hear now, the fan has gone down a teeny tiny bit. It's not that loud, to be honest. It's actually not that loud. Look at that, it's driving to 700 watt compared to the K1 Max, it's not that loud. Adding another extra fan in the room. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be very bad for me, but it's what I gotta do, right? For whatever reason, my bed is not going up at all. Okay, it's going up, it's going up. The wattage only goes up, and the fan only kicks on if the K1 Max is heating up the bed. I don't know why it's not reaching 80. For whatever reason, it's not reaching 80 at all. Is it because it doesn't have enough wattage power? I don't really think so. Oh, that's hot. Okay, this is getting to 75, still using lots of power. This thing is stuck at 77 for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, okay. I think it's, yeah, the bed is slowly going up. So, it's gonna reach eventually. Okay, it's using about 600 watt now. So once the initial startup of the K1 Max is finished, it actually quiets down a lot and it doesn't use that much wattage, which is nice. Yay! Made it! I did it! Let's go! So now, even if that outlet went out, my whole thing is still, is still on. It reaches, I don't know, it never reaches 80. <laughs> Whatever. Let me know. Is your cable max like this never reach 80 C on the bed? Or is it because I'm using this thing and it doesn't have the power to do it? I don't think so. I think it's still using the same power source. But whatever. Okay, it dies so. I think it reaches there. I just gotta do a calibration. But it works, it works. Everything's still everything's still on. Which is nice. And yeah. Well, first time on the floor. <laughs> But yeah, that is it for this video of the Anchor Maker. If you are interested, I will make a update video later in the future. But as of right now, I got everything set up. I unboxed this thing. I set up everything. I'm going to connect it to my phone after this video. But that's where I'm going to place the Anchor Solex. That's going to be powering the K1 Max, my CR6SE, and my computer. So that even when the power in the house went out at like a 9 hour print time, it's still it still continue printing and I'm gonna connect the Inker Solex to the wall outlet so that it can draw power to himself and then put power to all these three machines which is very nice also and that is it with this video of me setting this up using the Inker Solex they didn't send me this I bought this with my own money so it works and yeah now see you in the next video as always keep on printing